Hi guys and welcome back to the Blues Focus channel for a brand new series. It's it's that time of year again, isn't it really? It'll be a transfer rumour roundup series. Hopefully there'll be plenty of episodes. It depends how many players we're linked with really, isn't it? Um, but hopefully considering how early it's already kicked off, I suppose with a few links, let's just hope it's on the up from here. It gets more exciting, a few more links and then we can continue this series as much as possible and I can kind of guide you through the roller coaster that is the transfer window. It's never normally boring at Blues, that's for sure. So um, uh, we'll, we'll we'll sit down and chat about it as regularly as possible. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. Please do drop a like and a comment uh, on just your thoughts on uh, Blues' transfers and where you think we should strengthen this season. Um, but without for, further ado, let's get straight into it. Uh, first player we're linked with, according to Football League World, is Jordan Graham, left winger, Gillingham, um, decent season so far, 11 goals and six assists. Not bad going in League One. He's never he's never really had a consistent season. Um, I know f f fan reaction has been mixed so far. However, Bowyer did try to secure him on deadline day in January for Charlton and failed to do so. But he's out of contract this summer and Blues want to pick him up on a free, um, which... From my point of view, I think it'd be a decent bit of business. Uh, I think it's been a while since we last dipped into League One and it's about time we did because a lot of teams do and uh, do it successfully. And a lot of the time teams reap the rewards. But um, no, we, we're going to look to sort of statistically break down uh, each target that we talk about. And um, I'll just give you my thoughts on whether we should sign him or not. Um, but without any further ado, let's let's look at the stats uh, that Graham offers this season. So overall, he's made 42 appearances, very consistent player, which is good because we you obviously don't want to sign players that are injury prone. He's definitely had some injury struggles earlier on in his in his career, um, but since then he's just struggled to settle anywhere and get any game time. In fairness. Um, so it's, it's not, I wouldn't say it was for the lack of trying for the lad, unfortunately, but um, he's just not had much chance to prove what he's got. He's finally got this spell at Gillingham and it's been a good season for him. So there is a, there's a bit of interest there from clubs that want to sign him on a free. His transfer market value is only £225,000. Um, I say only, but that is low for a football player. Um so it wouldn't really be the biggest steal ever. Um, but if we do sign him, then uh, depending on how he plays, really, just will be the judge whether it has been a successful transfer. If we do sign him, that is. So his points per game when he plays is 1.43. So, you know, he's whenever he is playing, he is averaging over a point for the team. Um, very impressive. Uh, he's In all competitions this season, he's had 12 goals. Um, and nine assists. Um, and in the league, I do believe it's 11 goals and six assists. So, no, overall, he's had a very, very good season. Uh, so 42 appearances in, in all competitions, 12 goals, nine assists. I, you know, if, if a Blues player was reaching those heights, we'd be saying what a great season he's had. Obviously, there is a gap between League One and Championship, but there are players that when they make the step up, they actually perform better than they than they did in League One because they're working at better training grounds under better coaches. Um, you never know, this, this could be one of those cases, but there's only one way to find out. Um, he's only had three yellow cards this season, so he's not, he's not really the dirtiest of players. Um, and he's played the majority of Gillingham's games. You know, he's played over 3,500 minutes this season, which is a lot. Um, so it's, it's good to see that he's not really picked up any injuries at all this season. Um, definitely a hard-working winger. A um, little bit of pace about him. A decent delivery. But I think the main thing that intrigues me is his goal tally. You know, 12 in all competitions. Um, it's nice it's always nice to have a winger that's got a goal in him. I think that's what Blues lack this season. Um, and that's goals from other areas of the pitch. Because um, we rely heavily on our front two a lot of the time. And I think it'd be nice to maybe bring a few more goals into the team from different areas of the pitch, especially in wide areas. We know, we all know that Bella and Sanchez are more than capable of doing that. And I do believe we'll do that more in the future. Um under Lee Bowyer. However, that does bring me on to 
uh, if Bowie's looking at wingers, um, it would just make you wonder what sort of system we could be playing next season. However, Graham has played wing back roles previously. Um, he's played them. I think he's played wing back at Wolves in his brief spell there. Um, it's not. It wasn't even a brief spell to be honest. He was there for quite a while, but he just never played. So, um, but he did. He has played wing back elsewhere, including at Wolves. Um, so maybe that is why he's trying to uh, Bo's trying to bring him into the squad so he can fit that sort of three five two that we play, or uh, you know the five three two, whatever you want to call it. Um, but no, we'll, we'll we will see really um, on that one. I don't think wide areas is probably where we need to strengthen the most right now, personally, from my point of view. But it's still a decent little signing. I think it maybe if it was on a low risk deal for Blues. Um, a reasonable wage, maybe a one-year deal for him to prove himself um, or a two-year deal isn't bad either. I think just so long as, the, you know, the numbers are right and the deal is in the club's favour, I wouldn't be against it. Uh, I know a few fans are thinking, you know, it's, it's not really what Blues need, um, that it may be a waste of money, but I, I think it'd be a decent signing for Blues and I'd be willing to take the risk personally. Um considering he's had a, such a good season, it'd be interesting to see how a player like that would fare under Boya. So it's a yes from me, but I, I wouldn't be heartbroken if we didn't sign him, that's for sure, because I don't think we need to really strengthen in wide areas all too much. But he does offer that flexibility between wing-back and winger, uh, which I think will be good for Blues. Which brings me on to my next target, which is m- definitely a much more championship-accomplished target. Um then that's Jamie Patterson. Uh, he's played for multiple clubs in the championship. Um, obviously, he's at Bristol City now, but more recently, he was on loan at Derby last season. Uh, came through at Forest, um, was a key player for them. I know Forest fans rate Jamie Patterson quite highly. Um, probably not so much anymore since he went on loan to Derby. But, um, you know, that's I, I, I just know that a lot of Forest fans were big fans of Jamie Patterson when he was there. Uh, he's done. He's done all right at Bristol. To be fair, I remember when he came back into the fray at Bristol under Lee Johnson and um, a bit under Dean Holden. And um, he has actually performed quite well. Uh, he has a transfer market of one point eight million, which is always good. And if you're getting a player worth one point eight million on a free, that realistically on paper that does look like a, a bit of a steal, which is nice to see. He's never really had many bad seasons or bad spells at Bristol. He's always been a very decent player. Um, scored against Blues twice last season, um, once for Bristol and once for Derby. Uh, both very similar goals, actually getting in behind and a decent, you know, low-driven finish. Um, one of the, the one at Bristol was, you know, very early goal, but we went on to win the game. Um, and then the one at Derby was uh, actually a late winner um, for them to win 3-2 at Derby. Um, both decent strikes as well. So this season, overall, in all competitions, he's made 22 appearances and 20 appearances in the league. Um, points per game for his side, a little bit lower than Graham, is 1.36. Um, so still averaging over a draw whenever he plays. Um, total this season, total goal tally is four goals, three of them being in the league, one of them being in the Cup. I think that's the FA Cup. Uh, don't hold me to that. Um, and then, obviously, two assists, both in the championship. And to, in fairness, three goals, two assists in 20 appearances isn't that bad. Um, I say it's very average championship stat. Um, same as Graham when it comes to yellow cards. Only three yellow cards, so not the most reckless player out there. But he's played less than, you know, less than double the uh, minutes that Graham's played this season for Gillingham. Uh, Patterson has only played one thousand, just over one thousand five hundred minutes for uh, Bristol, um, but he's shown glimpses this season that he's always, you know, you know the quality is always there. He's definitely, I think, he definitely bring a lot more, I suppose, comfortable, comfortable football um, in if he's in a central role or if he's out wide. It is another winger slash central attacking midfielder. Um, which again is more areas that I don't think we really need to strengthen right now. Um, I think we're quite wealthy in those positions. So it is a strange one. Um, I think that the link comes from Football Insider. Uh, so that's the source. Um, if you want more information on obviously these two players, uh, please go and check out the links to bluesfocus.com. 
uh, down uh, down below in the uh, description for articles talking about the two targets and um, obviously what the sources that have brought this to light have said. Um, uh, so yeah, so no, the, the link has come from Football Insider, quite a reliable source. Um, I saw it was tweeted uh, by a bloke from Sky today as well that there's quite a few clubs interested, including his former club Nottingham Forest are also interested. So it wouldn't surprise me if Patterson did go that way because obviously he's been there before. Um, but yeah, no, it's um, it's another decent championship signing. And I, I know I've got a few Derby County friends, as some viewers might already know, who rated him highly when he was there. He just didn't get enough game time. I think he might have had one injury as well. He is a little bit of an injury-prone player at times. But this season, 20 appearances in and out of the squad. Um, not bad. Not bad. Um, but injury would probably be my only concern. However... I would be more than happy for Blues to sign Jamie Patterson. I think it'd be a decent signing who has proved that he can do it on his day in the championship. Um, however, age-wise, 29, probably not the most long-term player, but could definitely do a job. So it's a yes from me. But again, another signing that I, I wouldn't be all too disheartened if we missed out on. Um, but I, I would like to see Blues go in for Patterson and hopefully um, we, we might see him in a blue shirt next season. I wouldn't mind that. Uh, but that's it, uh, guys, for this episode. It's um, only the two links so far. Hopefully more to follow. Um, we can hope from there out, uh, see if it gets more exciting. But um, I hope to bring you more episodes just talking about transfer rumours and all that, um, no matter how crazy they may be or if they're reliable, unreliable, all of it. Um, we'll get the whole the whole shebang on Blues Focus um, TV. But yeah, no, uh, thank you for joining me as always. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Keep right on.